What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 9 video. Today, I'm going to be talking about a Pokemon that I think hasn't been explored quite enough. Now, you might be thinking like, Marcos, so Valley's trash in the format, so Valley's never been a good VGC Pokemon. And I'll say, true, so Valley has never really been like a really, really good VGC Pokemon. However, I think that's partially due to people being stuck on one particular set, and that set is on screen. But I'll be getting into that in a moment. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer my comment question of the day. How would you run Soul Valley in this format? And who would you run it next to? I really appreciate your feedback. Also, if you guys want to do me a favor, join the Discord. It's completely free. And you can, you know, talk to me about Pokemon. You can talk to others about Pokemon. Get some practice games in. And there's also a new page on that Discord server where you can see all the teams that I've made in the pastes for those teams so you can use them yourself. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first Soul Valley set that I want to talk to you guys about is the one that you all know about. And I want to preface this. This video isn't about like, oh, Soul Valley is like the greatest Pokemon ever. This is a video about like, hey, I think we should be trying out different things when it comes to Soul Valley since it has so many options with it. I think that being stuck on Choice Scarf Boom is just not a good idea. But yeah, uh, let's talk about Choice Scarf Boom first. So Soul Valley is like the strongest explosion in the game because it has a decently high attack set at 95 and it gets stab on explosion, which takes it from 250 base power to 375 base power. Uh, with the choice scarf in base 95 speed, you can run like a jolly or adamant nature and you'll be outspeeding pretty much everything. And typically what you do is you you would run this next to sign like a dragapult or a dust clops, a ghost type that doesn't get affected by the damage. And you would attempt to use this Sylvalia valley to clear the board. Now, this could be circumvented by switching your opponent switching in their own ghost type and protecting, uh, going for a fake out and eliminating the Soul Valley. There were a lot of there was a lot of counterplay to this. And if you saw Soul Valley on lead, you'd be like, yeah, it's gonna explode. And it wasn't really hard to play around it. Granted, you had a ghost type or you just had protect on your team. Uh, they would lose a piece for essentially nothing. A free turn with their ghost type. Now, this set also rocks rock slide, parting shot, and crunch, because Choice Scarf Parting Shot is great for getting in and out, lowering the offense of your opponent's or lowering the offensive stats of your opponent's Pokemon while getting something better in. Rock Slide was good for fishing for flinches while hitting things like Charizard or other flying types, and Crunch was just to allow the Savali to hit ghost types for some decent damage. So yeah, I think that this was an okay set, however I don't think it's ideal. Um, having Savali essentially just be an explosion button is really predictable, and we have seen it, like, I believe in 2018 there was like a juniors team that at Worlds got like second or third place, something like that. I might be completely wrong. Um, but like, you know, we have seen it do well in certain tournaments with like junior and senior players, but I don't really see Soul Valley, you know, getting past this, <laughs> this one trick pony set, uh, unless people are willing to push it and try to find a position for it on other spots on teams. So I have four ideas for that. The last two ideas pretty much require a Thunderous on the team. So that's a start for you guys. The first set, is going to be taking advantage of its normal typing and its good coverage by running an expert belt set. One of the main drawbacks of Sil Valley is that unlike Arceus, who can run plates, so if you were to give this thing, let's go to like the ice set, if you were to give this thing like the ice plate, the ice skill plate uh, would actually, it doesn't say it here, but it gives it like a 20% boost on ice moves, but it can't do that. It has to run ice memory, it's not allowed to run plates for the uh, typing to change. So. Because of that, uh, so Valley is not really the type of Pokemon that wants to change its typing. It would usually rather stay normal type and take advantage of its coverage moves with some useful item, whether it be like safety goggles, a citrus berry, a lumberry, anything beyond a, a, a plate is usually preferred when it comes to most Silvalli Valley sets. So this one we're running an expert belt because it does give us that 20% boost to super effective moves. And with coverage like Ice Beam, Flamethrower, and if you really wanted to Thunderbolt, um, you have a lot of options with this thing when it comes to hitting Pokemon. What I've actually calced the Soul Valley to do is it's going to naturally outspeed all base 91 Pokemon, which is essentially Landorus Therian. And by outspeeding Landorus Therian, you have a few options. Expert Belt Ice Beam will always one-shot it, and if it Dynamaxes and it's non-Assault Vest, uh, Expert Belt Max Hailstorm will always one-shot it then too. So that's really cool. Uh, Parting Shot will allow you to pivot on a lot of slower Pokemon, whether they be things like Grimmsnarl, Incineroar, Stack Attack, uh, Glacier. You can Parting Shot on a lot of things. Flamethrower is actually calced to, um, if, you know, your opponent Dynamaxes with their Kartana, 
Uh, the flamethrower on like max special defense Kartana with an assault vest will still KO it. So it's always going to be doing at least 100%. So that's really nice. Uh, flamethrower is also nice for catching things like Venusaur and Sun. It's going to be taking a solid chunk of damage because of the expert belt and the sun boost. Um, it's also good for hitting Celesteela with a max flare if you really want to. Rillaboom doesn't like taking either of these two moves. Glacier doesn't like taking that move. And because you're normal typing, you're immune to things like ghost moves, but you also only have one weakness in fighting. The fact that most moves will only hit you for neutral with a Pokemon this bulky is actually really, really good. So yeah, I think that Silvalli has a couple of options when it comes to just being a coverage monster. Hyper Voice is good for just, you know, hitting things for a stab move. However, if you want to take full advantage, I would say just swap it out for something else, something that really, really lets you lay the damage on pretty much any Pokemon that comes in. If you run Thunderbolt, you can pretty much hit everything. You know, Ice, Fire, Electric, you're hitting pretty much everything for super effective in the game. Uh, but yeah, I think that coverage Silvalli is a pretty decent option in that case, but I would personally just run a Hyper Voice for, um, you know, for stab and just general damage. Nothing really wants to take that when it has like, you know, stab on it and it's maxed out. So yeah, uh, we have an Assault Vest Silvalli. Silvalli, like I said, has a lot of options when it comes to just moves in general. You can see it has things like Iron Defense, it has Flash Cannon, it's got Substitute, well, most things have Substitute. Uh, Rock Slide, U-Turn, Zen Headbutt, Bite, Crush Claw, Endure, Giga Impact, Hail, Icy Wind. It gets like, pretty much if there's a typing, it gets at least one move, even if it's a bad move. I think there are only a few typings it doesn't get. And even then, if it doesn't get that typing, you can go ahead and just run a plate. Um, but because it has such a wide variety of options, it does have these pretty nice support moves. Snarl and Icy Wind are pretty much what you're going to want to be running on this. Snarl being able to lower the special attack stat of anything that it hits, whether it be a Venusaur, whether it be a Tapu Fini, or any really powerful special attacker, it's going to be able to tank a hit from them because of its naturally high bulk. Um, and it's decently high speed, like it's going to outspeed most Pokemon, meaning that the Snarl will likely go first. And because it's so fast, uh, you're going to be able to run Icy Wind to slow the opponent's Pokemon and possibly with dynamic speed mechanics, allow your Pokemon to outspeed it on that turn. U-Turn is good for positioning or for repositioning your Silvalli. Um, I would prefer if I could run Parting Shot on this thing because that's just ideal. However, with the Assault Vest, you're not able to do that. Maybe if you ran like a Figgy Bear, you could run Parting Shot. Uh, but yeah, these two moves are generally the bread and butter of this set. Hyper Voice is just a covered, not coverage, it's just a stab move to uh, hit things for some decent damage. You could even just completely get rid of the special attack stat and dump it into special defense, and it would turn out pretty much fine. But yeah, uh, I think Silvalli as a coverage Pokemon is great, but I think Silvalli as a support Pokemon is just a little bit less viable, but still somewhat useful for some teams. So yeah. Next up, we have the two offensive Silvallis that actually change their typings. And like I said, this is pretty much going to require require like a Thunderous next to it uh, because of Thunderous's access to Max Airstream and its access to Defiant, which will dissuade people from leading off with Incineroar and intimidating it. So yeah, Silvalli Ice. Silvalli Ice is actually really interesting in that um, having access to a completely accurate high base power uh, ice move is something that really only uh, Calyrex Ice had with Glacial Lance. However, this isn't quite as strong, but just the fact that it's base 120 and able to hit 100% accurate is nice. You know, you don't have to risk Icicle Crashes missing or Icicle Spears not hitting quite enough. So yeah, um, multi-attack turning into that is kind of nice because it's base 120. You're going to be able to hit a lot of things in the format. You're going to be able to hit uh, Landorus Therian, Rillaboom, uh, Dragapult, Venusaur, Thunderous, Zapdos. There are a lot of really powerful flying types in this format that don't want to take something so powerful. And they'd really only be able to take it really well if it were intimidated, which if you run a Thunderous next to this thing, you're going to be able to dissuade them from doing that. On top of that, if you Dynamax the Thunderous, uh, this guy is actually speed crept to make sure that you can outspeed Dragapult at plus one. So you can max Airstream into whatever is next to it if they lead off like Dragapult Venusaur or something. You can max Airstream into the Venusaur for a KO with the Thunderous and then knock out the, uh, knock out the, Ven not the Venusaur, the Dragapult with the multi-attack, which turns into a nice move. Also, if you want a little bit extra power, what I did is I made this set a Jolly set. However, you could swap around the EVs. These guys have essentially the same, you know, speed stat. 143 at plus one will allow you to outspeed Dragapult. So if you want to make an Adamant Nature just for that extra boost in power, uh, that isn't a terrible idea. You just lose out on some of the bulk that it would have otherwise. It goes from 175 HP uh, to 188 HP if you run a Jolly Nature. Now, 
you're going to be wanting to run something like rock slide to make sure you're not completely helpless in the face of an incineroar in case it does manage to get in on you and your thunderous goes down and u-turn is just generally a good move for uh getting in and out on the field you could swap out for parting shot or something but i think i prefer to run u-turn in this set just because we're already maxing out the attack stat the damage wouldn't be terrible even if it's just a little bit of chip next up we have the fairy offensive set uh, I think that Silvalli Fairy is probably the most viable offensive version of Silvalli, funny enough, and that's just because the coverage means it's not helpless in the face of things like Nihiligo or Venusaur. So, multi attack as a fairy move hits a lot of really important Pokemon that would usually be problematic for a team. So, if we take a look at what's common in the format, uh, hitting something with a powerful physical fairy move is something that's pretty much exclusive to, like, I don't know, a zoom roll right now. So, you're going to be able to hit things like Urshifu, both the Urshifu, Grimmsnarl, Dragapult, Moltres Galar, and just so many Pokemon like Garchomp, like all the Dragon types, Tyranitar if you see it even though it's not as common anymore. You're going to be able to hit them with a physical, powerful uh, Max Fairy move. And on top of that, by Dynamaxing this thing and turning it into the uh, Max Starfall, you will also make it so your Silvalli is immune to burns. And if you run it next to the Thunderous, you know, if they can't burn it and they can't intimidate it, so Valley is a little bit more difficult to deal with. So yeah, uh, Psychic Fangs is great for dealing with the various poison types that might want to mess up your Sovalli's day, whether it be a Venusaur, but you could also just max or stream into that. Um, it also deals with the Nihiligo, but in the Nihiligo's case, I would actually just go ahead and go for the Max Steel Spike for that defense boost on top of uh, KOing it. But yeah, I think that Fairy Sovalli is something that I'm going to try out on a Thunderous team. What I would actually do is, if I were to run this, right, I think what I want to do is run Fairy Soul Valley uh, next to a Thunderous Nihiligo Urshifu squad. And even though that's like really doubling down on the, um, you know, the physical attackers, I think that by running it with this particular core, you already have like a really solid archetype there. What this essentially does is better, it, it helps out with your matchup versus opposing Urshifu, Thunderous, Nihiligo squads because you're going to be gonna be able to always deal with the Urshifu. Uh, you're going to be able to deal with the Nihiligo to an extent. If you max Airstream, you can outspeed Nihiligo and then just like Iron Headed or Psychic Fangs it, whichever one does more, I believe Psychic Fangs. And probably knock it out because Nihiligo's physical defense isn't very good. So yeah, uh, it, somewhat, it somewhat improves that matchup, which is pretty nice. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. This was more me just getting my ideas out for Sil Valley. How would you use it? Are you going to use it? Let me know. But yeah, with that, I'm going to call it. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.